Does this illusion work for you? To me, this looks like it's magnifying the text underneath, but in Rio, it doesn't. It's just the pattern I'm moving around. But somehow, because the square looks like it's on top of the circles, maybe I'm thinking that it must be closer as well, so the text on top of it seems larger. Weird. Anyway, in this video, I'll teach you how to code this pattern and how to make it follow the mouse. And I'll show you how to do it in a way so you can embed it on different websites to test. Now, start your coding editors and let's focus on making you a better coder. Get it? Focus. Because then. <laughs> no. Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Let's code now. I'm working in Visual Studio Code and I have it open here in an empty folder. And let's create a file, index.html. And in it, let's type basic HTML. So the doc type at the top, and now the open tag and the closing tag and the head section. And in it, let's give this page a title. Let's call it fake magnifier, like so. And in the body, we actually won't add any element into the body, not in the HTML itself, but we will using JavaScript. So I'm going to start a script tag. And in it, we will generate a canvas element. So my canvas is document create element canvas. Normally we add this canvas element in the HTML here, but now I want to do it like this and I'll tell you why later. And we also have to add it to the body. So document body, append child, my canvas. This is the same as defining it in HTML basically. And let's give this canvas a size width set to Let's make it a square and it will be having this size value. This will be a global value, a variable defined here like so. And if we open this index.html in a web browser, we will get this. It says fake magnifier here at the top, but the canvas is not appearing even though if you open the developer tools in the elements tab, you will see it there with a width and a height of 200. It's just transparent. So let's give it a background so that we can see it. I'll do it here. Background color, let's make it red. And now when we refresh the page, we see it appearing here like this. And what we need to do next is draw those kind of Pac-Man-like shapes in each corner. And I would start with a circle, definitely. So let's go down here and set the size for those circles, a radius. And I will do it as a fraction of the actual size of the canvas multiplied by, let's say, 20%. And now we get a reference to the drawing context of the canvas, the 2D drawing context. And let's begin a path and draw the top left arc. So it's going to be centered at radius, radius, with the radius of radius. <laughs> Maybe these could be named to left and top, assigning variables for them. Up to you to make the code better. But now let's specify also the start angle, so zero, and the end angle is the full circle for now. And that will be two pi in radians. And let's fill this 
circle like so. Save and a refresh gives us one circle here. And we are going to need to duplicate this code for each of the corners. So let's just take this. And um, here we have to move this one to the right, for example. So let's make it size minus the radius. So this would be right if you want to define a variable for it. And then this one here is also on the right, but also at the bottom. So this size minus radius here would be the bottom variable. And then here we just want from the bottom so that it goes to the left, like so. Let's save. And when we refresh, we get this. But these shouldn't be full circles. And you could play with some properties of the arc method to get it to work. For example, let's focus on this last one we added here and remove this last part from here, make it look like that. We would do that by maybe putting here 1.5. And if we refresh, we get this. The only thing it's missing is one line to the center here. So that would do the job. Like so. But I don't like it. There are many things to calculate for the other ones. And it's actually much easier to just draw a square over all of them and cut out pieces of all the circles at once using it. So I undo this. It was just kind of a, a demo. We have two here again. And what we'll do is we'll move below all of the circles and let's begin a path and fill a rectangle from top left. So radius, radius, and then the size minus two times the radius, both horizontally and vertically. And now if we save and refresh, we are going to get this square appearing here, but we don't want it to be added into this. We want it to cut out part of the circles so what we'll do is before we draw it, we will set the global composite operation to destination out. This is going to do what we want. And now it looks like this. But it should follow the mouse, right? So let's do that. I'm going to go up here and set its position to fixed and add an event listener to the window so that this canvas moves at the mouse location. So I'm going to type add event listener for mouse move and let's add the quick arrow function here with the event as a parameter and inside I'm going to set my canvas style left is equal to the information from the event client x and this is a number the style needs to have also the unit there so let's put pixels and append there to the to the value and the same thing will happen for style top using event client y and pixels now if we save and refresh and move the mouse inside the screen we can see it's following the mouse just fine. We don't need it at this moment to be red and we would maybe like the mouse to be in the center or the canvas to be surrounding the mouse nicely. So let's remove this red background from here and here we can add minus size divided by two minus size divided by two. Let's save and refresh. And now this looks fine. But we don't have anything inside of this to try to magnify. And that's the reason why I wanted to put everything as a JavaScript code here. Because now you can 
copy it and paste it on any web page, pretty much in the developer tools. I'll show you. I'm going to go to the Dragon Ball Wikipedia page. And here, let's open the developer tools and paste in the console everything we wrote in the script. And now when we move the mouse on page, we have it there. And we don't need the developer tools open anymore. And does the effect work for you? For me, it does a little bit. But what I find works even better is if the um, circles on the side are a little bit bigger. So um, if we go here and multiply by maybe 0.23, let's see how it looks like. 25 would mean 25%, so they would be touching actually, and I don't want that. So um, let's copy this again. Refresh the Wikipedia page, open the developer tools, paste. And now, yeah, I see it even better than before. It's like somehow that those circles are there and then there's a square on top of them. And because that's how I see it, the text inside that square somehow appears to be closer because it should be on the square that is over the circles, or at least the way I see it. Weird. <laughs> but let me know, does it work for you? And uh, this might be an issue, like now the canvas is going behind this header there. So if you want to fix it, you could go back to the console and type there a large enough Z index for the canvas. Of course, you can put that in your original code base as well. And this is going to go there. And uh, maybe since this follows the mouse, the mouse cursor is a little bit bothering me there. So we could remove that if we type. Let's get the first child in the document, usually the body, and set the style cursor to none. And now that is gone. So let's close this one more time. And yeah. <laughs> nice. Do you like coding things like this? Let me know in the comments and check out the playlist with many other projects like this I've made many illusions in recent history. Thanks for watching and see you guys.